Hey, Feral Processing Universe. It's Hank Balch here from Beyond Clean. You are watching and listening to another, to another live episode of Fighting Dirty. And on this episode, we're going to be talking to Brett Norton from Sertal International. I'll bring him on here in a moment. And the topic that we're going to cover today is sterile processing safety. We're going to chat about the new Safety Burst virtual conference that's coming up on November 7th, Saturday, November 7th. It's one of the uh, first Saturday virtual conferences that we've had. So we're really pumped about that. A lot of the previous ones have been uh, on Fridays and we've gotten some feedback from some folks in the industry to have some weekend conferences. So we're excited to have this Safety Burst conference again on November 7th. Um, if you are watching this before the conference, we're gonna have um, a lot of information and links about how to register in the comments section. And then at the end of this conversation, uh, I'll share the information about the website, etc. If you're watching or listening to this after November 7th though, I've got great news. You can still enjoy the entire Safety Burst conference on demand through registering at the exact same registration link that we're going to be sharing. So you have not missed out. If you're listening before or after, the opportunity is still here uh, to be safer in your sterile processing department. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest here, Brett hey. Norton, welcome to the show. Thanks, Hank. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm trying to stay busy around here, man. It's uh, It kind of comes in waves with all the COVID stuff. You know, one day you feel like you've got absolutely nothing to do and then everything gets piled on and you're trying to balance home life and work life. I don't know how things have been for you. You know, that's my story. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like every day sometimes you feel like you're catching up and then uh, something happens and you're trying to put together a virtual event that's happening on a Saturday. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, then you get real busy, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you, know, they, you, know, you need something right away and uh, you need to put together something like this, which we love doing. Um, but yeah, this whole year, as you know, has been all about pivoting and trying to figure out the best way to get the content out to our audience and to keep people educated and engaged. Um, you know, I was reading today about, uh, it was an article that was um, published by the Cleveland Clinic about Zoom fatigue. So mm -hmm. I know that, that is a reality for a lot of people and just trying to come up with ways to make sure that people find some avenues and, and just stay interested and engaged. Um, you know, that that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. Well, before we get too far, because I want to actually, there's something else that you just said that I want to follow back up on, but I want to make sure folks know who you are, what your background is, you know, what it is exactly that you do. So if you could kind of, you know, just take us through that, you know, what your current role is. And then again, just give us a little bit more context about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have been here at Sertal now for three years. I'm the sales and marketing manager. My background has been, you know, kind of a little bit of a diverse way of getting into this industry. My family, uh, my dad is a retired physician. My sister is a practicing physician. My mom's a dietitian. My brother is a PA. So healthcare runs pretty deep in our family. And, you know, it's always been a passion of mine. I've, you know, kept a pulse on it ever since I was young, after, you know, I'd go and do rounds with my dad as a kid and really tried to, or really had a passion for the industry as a whole. And most specifically, it was patient care, um, patient safety. I did kind of pivot a little bit and went into the marketing side of things, went into different industries to really try and hone in my expertise on the various marketing strategies, because they're they're everywhere out there. And I think working in different industries and being exposed to what is available and what you can do 
uh, has helped me in this journey. And, um, you know, it really did help me kind of find a way to bring some of that expertise to Sertal. And, uh, and I've also really um, grown as a professional here. And now I'm actually going out to the facilities, well, was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just being out there and training nurse teams, hospital nurse teams, clinicians, SPD professionals on best practices, uh, giving them some educational background and product knowledge on our products. Um, you know, I, I didn't necessarily touch on what Sertol does, but Sertol is a chemical manufacturer. We have a whole line of uh, chemistries, detergents, enzymatic products, disinfectants, uh, pretreatment, lubricants, all of that type of chemistry that really feeds into sterile processing land. So I've really dove into that. And, um, you know, with that healthcare background, the passion of patient care has come first and foremost and really um, honed in on the patient safety aspect and tried to work with our our SPD heroes and the hospital teams because it's a conglomerate, it's a group and everybody should be working together for the uh, good of our patients and safety in general. Yeah, well, to go back you know, to what you had said about 2020 really being a different um, kind of year, a lot of first for 2020, um, this safety conference that we're gonna jump in here and to really discuss in a moment is a first. I, I was sitting, it was probably three months ago, uh, I was sitting down, you know, reading uh, another article in the sterile processing industry, um, and it was about patient safety, I think, actually. And it got me thinking, there's a lot of focus on the patient for good reason. We're there for the patient. But what COVID actually taught us is without healthy uh, providers, uh, the entire system will fail. That was one of the uh, the most frightening things at the beginning of this pandemic was the question like, can we keep our frontline professionals and providers safe enough to continue to care for everyone else who may be coming into the healthcare facility for treatment? And that was a really, like, that was a provocative thought that I don't think folks had really been confronted with on a national level as we did in COVID. And of course, a lot of that ended up focusing on PPE. Um, but in sterile processing, I realized that there really had never been a concerted effort to have a conversation focused around the safety of our teams, the people in the trenches doing the job in sterile processing, in endoscopy. Um, how do we keep those people safe? Are they safe? What are their concerns? Um, and that was really the impetus for the, uh, like for the sterile processing safety conference. But before I go too much farther in that, you know, to the guests on the show, I want to kind of get your opinion from the, 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 your specific perspective, again, as you said, from marketing um, in a company that deals with chemistries, right? So what does sterile processing safety mean to you? Like when I throw that phrase out there, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, you know, I think you touched on it. Um, it's, it, it, we think in terms of our sterile processing pros as protecting our patients. You know, that's, that's their, their journey, their job, and it is a critical uh, part of what they do. It's the heart of the hospital, basically. But, you know, in all of that focus, what gets lost to me, I think, is the safety of those professionals. Um, when you're down in these sterile processing departments and working with them and seeing what they have to deal with, uh, be it uh, you know sharp instruments in a sink or a slick floor, um, you know bending over, picking up heavy you know detergent canisters, 
And when it comes to our business, it's working with chemicals. You know, you've got all kinds of different chemicals that these professionals are working with. And, you know, they're not uh, necessarily safe all the way around. I mean, we've got uh, procedures and practices to educate and protect our pros with the PPE. But like you said, um, you know, PPE has been scarce in the COVID age and, you know, also dealing with these various chemistries, it sometimes gets lost. And, um, you know, I'll go into a sterile processing department and there are a variety of bottles. Um, some may or may not be labeled. A lot of uh, our SPD pros, you know, know these chemistries by color, but sometimes they don't know exactly what they are, what's what's in these chemicals, and what is actually harmful. And that's, you know, I think you're doing a great thing by focusing on, you know, the safety of the people that ultimately keep us all safe when we're in getting a surgery or whatever. Uh, I, you know, their safety to me is paramount. You know, if they're not safe, we're not safe. Well, and like for me, it's always uh, start the conversation. Like our model, even with Beyond Clean, has always not been to exhaust the conversation, to say everything that needs to be said, to cover all the bases, but to get folks thinking from another perspective and another viewpoint to say, um, are there risks? that we haven't considered yet? Or is there opportunity uh, to be safer that we haven't really addressed in the past? And uh, to your point about the chemicals, and actually, I don't know if it was Peggy who has said this on the podcast before, but I know one of our guests has brought it up. Um, the chemical that we're dealing with, if it's in decontam, if it's a sterilant, all of these things are uh, created to kill living organisms right? uh, so fyi we are living organisms <laughs> so they're not going to be totally safe you know for human consumption or exposure and all that kind of stuff like they're built to kill they're not they're not built to kill humans they're built to kill microbes obviously but um even outside of that chemical piece there's a lot of potential risk and dangers in sterile processing. So before we go too much further, I wanna throw out an audience poll for the folks who are tuning in and ask your perspective on what is your biggest sterile processing department safety concern? What about your department or your schedule or your equipment? Like what makes you shudder um as you come into work and saying am i going to get hurt is this place actually a safe space all right so that's a question that i want to get your answer to um in the comment section below if you're watching if you're if you're listening on the podcast we'd love to hear your answer you can send us an email at info at beyondclean.net and tell us what your biggest safety concern is and one of the reasons that I'm asking that question uh, is because the safety conference, Safety Burst, is the first safety conference in the industry, but I'm hoping it's not going to be the last. And even though we've got a terrific lineup of speakers, um, there's a lot more topics to cover than we're even going to have time to cover in one day. So I'd love to hear feedback you know from some opportunities hopefully we're going to cover a lot of the big safety concerns um in the lineup but we'd love to do this again obviously as well um so brett when i reached out you know i kind of reached out randomly i think one um uh, like one middle of the week and said hey guys i've got this crazy idea um i want to do this safety focused conference is that something that Search All would be interested in partnering with us on? How, what was your first uh, thought? And then, you know, what was the impetus behind saying, yeah, like we're going to do this thing? 
uh, you know, Peggy, our clinical education manager, who's going to be doing this um, presentation for the Safety Birds Conference, she she would have a lot to say about this, obviously, because she's very passionate about safety in general. Uh, but, you know, I think it, we go back to the patient safety side of things and just the chemistry side that it's, we're all about safety here at Sertal in general. I mean, we preach safety. We actually, you know, we go through our SDSs routinely, weekly, um, you know, our labeling on our products and making sure that it's clear and concise and understandable. So our sterile processing professionals are safe when they are using our chemistry, uh, you know, and also when it comes to nurse teams when they're utilizing our pre-treatment sprays and everything like that. I think, you know, most of our chemicals are not to the level of a, you know, glutaraldehyde or a sterilant that's, you know, can be very harmful, but there are risks as we've talked about with any chemical, um, you know, we're known for our enzymes. And so it's also good to be educating on what enzymes can do, you know, utilizing latex, you really shouldn't be doing that because uh, enzymes eat away at latex proteins. Uh, you know, so it's those types of things to where when this opportunity was pre presented to us, we're like, wow, we've got a lot to say. And, you know, our approach in the industry is, of course, we want to sell our products, but we also and first and foremost, we want to preach safety. We want to educate our professionals. We want to educate people that are using our products that, you know, the, this is how to use it. And if you're maybe not using our products, you know, using a similar product um, safely is a, a approach that we use. You know, it's, it's all about education and training first and foremost. And, um, you know, of course, yes, the sales are great, but we want our people to be safe. And that's our ultimate focus. I mean, our president here at Sertal preaches that um, daily, weekly. And, you know, we've got our team in the production area that's working with our chemicals and producing the chemicals. So right. you know, we've got to be very aware of what we're selling and promoting and working with. And if we can't be confident about it, then why would we be pushing it out to the market? We want to be confident right. and promote the safety side of things so our you know our customers can feel safe. Yeah, so you touched on a couple of things there uh, that I want to follow up on. And uh, this is not the purpose for this interview, you know, but this is a thread that is uh, is deep within beyond clean. And anyone who really pays attention to who we are and the conversations we have, you'll probably catch up on this, is um, products have to be used in sterile processing. So in the past, you know, there has been a very um, kind of assumption, you know, from users is like, oh, well, you know, marketing, yeah, marketing is bad. Like, just give me education. I just want education. I want you to leave the marketing out of it. But then, uh, we turn around as managers and directors and we have to make purchasing decisions. And we wanna be purchasing products that uh, do what they're supposed to be doing, that do it better maybe than competitive products. Um, and so we're still left in having to make those decisions. So if we don't have opportunities to engage with not only the education, but also the features and benefits of products in our industry, and I think we're really behind the eight ball. And so, um, early on in the, in the life of Beyond Clean, even like we decided, and it's in our mission statement that we're going to advocate for the people, the processes, and the products that are pushing sterile processing industry forward uh, because of that. Because that is our life. We don't operate in some kind of vacuum where just everything is pure education. Like you got <laughs> you have to buy things, you got to use things. So let's have a transparent conversation about, you know, is this better? If it's better, why is it better? Or if it's just different, how is it different? Um, so that's one thread, you know, that I think is important 
that you brought up, companies who are advocating strongly for their products in the marketing space, they should be. If they really believe that what they're selling is the best thing in the market, like you should see them pushing it 24-7, not only because it's good for business, but because they believe it's good for the patient, the department, the consumer, right? Um, the second thing, though, and this is more applicable to what we're talking about here, is you mentioned SDS, and you mentioned the instructions for use on these chemicals. And um, in cell processing, many times we hear IFU or we talk about IFU, and we're talking about how that instrument is cleaned or processed uh, for the purpose of patient safety. For at the end, it's going to be safe for the patient. But we don't have as many conversations like we're having right now, with, which is how do we use these products and this equipment in a way that keeps us safe so that we can continue keeping the patient safe. So that was an interesting comment there, you know, that picks up the whole thread of safety in our departments. Oh, yeah, well, thanks. I mean, you know, I, I you've been in countless sterile processing departments and our technicians, when you look up on some of these walls and the number of IFUs that they have to be responsible for, you know, to adhere to the instrument and not damage the instruments and make sure that the instruments are following a process and being cleaned properly, there's that gap of what is, where's the IFU for uh, keeping our, our process, processing technicians safe? You know, where's the IFU for using this specific chemical? Where, where's the IFU for, you know, making sure that this is the right chemical to be using? Uh, you know, there, uh, there have been times when I have been in a sterile processing department and, you know, they're running the wrong chemicals through the, you know, the lines, and that's not necessarily their fault. They're just following protocol. Uh, it's, but there's just no understanding of what chemicals do what and what, what the safety implications are. So I know that all of our processing professionals are out there doing the best they can, but we can certainly do better to help them with this process. Yeah. Well, and to throw out, like we've been talking a lot about chemicals, but I want to uh, ensure, you know, that we give the full perspective. So, so we're talking cleaning chemicals. I mentioned maybe before we got on here, sterilants um, is another one of those chemicals that we have to work with in order to do our job. It's not an option. We got to use sterilants, so we have to use high level disinfectants. That's there. But the question is, how do we do so safely? Um, in addition to that, you mentioned the uh, the slip and fall risks. I have fallen in my department before. Uh, there is water not only all over in the decontamination area, but there's water often on the clean side, depending on how the containers come out of the, the cart washer, how um, the trays are unloaded out of the automatic washer disinfectors, all kinds of drips can happen, or any kind of a, like other chemical can spill. We can spill the lubricant, we can spill the alcohol. All kinds of things can end up on the floor and you can slip. And I have seen many people do that. And I've even had staff members who have had to go uh, to the ER because they fell and they slipped. Um, in addition to that, you know, we got puncture issues, we got scrapes, there's all kinds of um, uh, photos of burns. If you go to the sterile processing Facebook groups, uh, you'll see autoclave burns on the forearm, you'll see hydrogen peroxide burns sometimes on the hands from the low temp sterilizers. Um, all uh, There's an article that I linked to that I wrote a couple of years ago, uh, the most frightening um, type of injury for me you know, that I've had a couple times was cutting myself on the tape dispenser at the prep and pack station because these tape dispensers are never clean. They're never disinfected. They've been there for years and years and years right in the place 
uh, processing, inspecting instrumentation, and then you slice your finger open on one of those in the middle of your job. And uh, who knows, again, what was on that tape dispenser. At least the instruments, if you if you poke yourself on the clean side, they send through a manual cleaning and an automated cleaning process, but a tape dispenser does not. Uh, so those kind of topics, you know, that I think gives a lot of vested interest for sterile processing technicians and leaders in our industry to be aware of and concerned about these kind of topics. Um, as we transition here to talk a little bit more about the conference itself, I want to start off uh, in talking about the session that Peggy Spitzer is doing for us. Can you share kind of a high level overview on why folks should want to tune in to that particular session? Um, and then after that, I'll talk about a few of the other uh, preview education sessions that are going to be on that next Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, like I've, or as we know, this is Peggy's program, so I'm not going to reveal too much um, because it's the whole point of tuning in a week ago or a week from this Saturday on November 7th. But she's really going to focus on the chemistry side of things and how effective chemical management can improve worker safety, best outcomes, um, you know, and then also equipment compatibility. Because, you know, as you touched on, we're working with, you know, our processing professionals are working with a variety of different machines. You know, you've even, you're working at the sinks, you've got your ultrasonics, your washers, uh, you've got your, you know, your um, various sterilant type, um, you know, procedures when you're cleaning scopes. So the chemistry that each procedure utilizes is different. And he's going to really uh, touch on objective resources for safe use of detergents and disinfectant chemicals, whether it be a low-level disinfectant, a mid-level, or a high-level disinfectant, because there are whole different measures of safety when working with those chemicals. Uh, we talked about safety data sheets, so utilizing those safety data sheets and the product labels to meet the IFUs. And then I think just to develop a chemical checklist for the department in general, uh, those are probably going to be the main objectives for this program. And then, of course, you know, uh, some other focusing um, on the various standards out there like Amy, uh, OSHA, and the safety standards that we are chemical or sterile processing department professionals should be following uh, to keep themselves safe. So it's going to be more or less a guide to really help them develop a practice and procedure that's not cumbersome and you know not uh, intense or crazy, but something that they can maybe adopt to really help them move forward with the chemistries that they're working with. Awesome. Yeah, for folks who have never heard Peggy or seen Peggy, she does a terrific job on those topics in particular. Um, I know when I was uh, president of the South Texas sterilizing chapter in San Antonio, we had Peggy down for one of our um, our winter conferences. And I remember her talking about that topic of a chemical checklist in particular, because it struck me in that moment that I really didn't know what chemicals were in my department. I had never actually sat down and say like, we have 20 chemicals, we have 30 chemicals. And this is like, these are all the different types of PPE that you need for those 30 chemicals. And even that information alone, again, to to start us thinking about how do we behave safely around these chemicals to ensure that we don't encounter PPE issues, you know, for instance, um, if we're using certain chemicals. If there are PPE requirements, you know, for chemicals that may do the same thing, but if they're manufactured by different companies, they may have different PPE requirements. Right, so like there's all kinds of aspects there that uh, 
that go back to, do you know what chemicals are actually in your sterile processing department? So yeah, that's gonna be a great opportunity for folks to check out. Uh, then as I alluded to as well, uh, Peggy's been on the Beyond Clean podcast a couple of times, so you could go to our podcast on the app, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and then search for Peggy, and you can find her episode. She recently had an episode or two uh, through the Isham process, or the Isham, um, uh, what is her podcast called? Um, process This. Yeah, Process This podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good thing. Um, so what was she talking about on that podcast, Brett? Do you remember? Uh, she's done a couple of them. Um, okay. Most recently, yeah, there has been, we've, we've focused, we've done a lot of um, educational type um, programs with pre-treatment because our pre-treatment spray is, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, kind of the first step in moving towards sterile processing. Um, but she has increasingly started to focus on the safety aspect of things. And uh, yeah, I, I would definitely encourage uh, checking out the most late, the latest um, Ishim podcast. It's very informative. Cool. Well, um, that's one session, but we've got a handful of other sessions. I'm just going to take a couple of moments and run through the other folks who are going to be educating on November 7th with us. Um, kicking off the conference at 8 in the morning is yours truly, and I'm presenting with Andy Petrovic on the topic of IFU noncompliance. The name of the presentation is Let's Be Honest. We're going to be talking about uh, the dirty secrets of IFU noncompliance and how your department can save the world. So tune in for that. We're going to kick it off bright and early Saturday morning, November 7th at 8 o'clock. Uh, for those of you who have not tuned in to a Beyond Clean virtual event before, they're super cool. Once you get into the dashboard, you can click around, you can download PDFs, you can watch videos, there's a Q&A module in there. Uh, but once you're done with the event, you can click right into the CE quiz, download your CE certificate and get that right away. So uh, it's a great experience even outside of the education. Um, the second session is actually gonna be co-hosted with the Vice President of Beyond Clean, Michael Matthews and Braun Kais from RST Automation. And they're going to be talking about how st strategic automation in sterile processing can improve morale, protect staff, and hardwire safety. They call that working smart. So that's going to be a fun one. That kicks off at 9.15 Eastern time in the morning with Braun and Michael. Uh, then after that, we're going to be following with one of... Uh, Beyond Clean's expert series members, Tom Overby. He is the ultrasonic cleaning expert this year for Beyond Clean. And he's going to be talking about a top 10 list for working with ultrasonics and how to be safe in utilizing that equipment. That's going to happen at 10.30 Eastern time, 10.30 to 11.30. So you can go watch Tom for that. At 11.45, one of America's most beloved educators, Bob Mars, our vice president as well, is going to be presenting on the importance of chemical monitoring in sterile processing. So we've talked a lot about chemicals already in this panel discussion, but Bob is going to go in depth uh, to a lot of those chemicals that have exposure in the air, the things that you may breathe that could impact your health and safety on that session at, at 11.45. So make sure and check that out with Bob. At one o'clock in the afternoon, after we get a good lunch at home, right? Virtual conference, we're not providing lunch, it's virtual conference. <laughs> um, but at one o'clock, Marianne Drosnock is gonna follow up with a topic on endoscope reprocessing and in particular, how to engineer safety in that process. So um, 
I highly recommend tuning in for Marianne if you've never heard her present. She's another one of those bright stars out there that just knows this industry front and back. So make sure to tune in for her. Uh, 215 is actually when Peggy is going to steal the show, just like we've been talking about, a toolbox for managing disinfectants and cleaning the chemicals and sterile processing. Again, if you can't name all the chemicals in your department, which I, I'm going to reckon most of us cannot, unless we've got this checklist that she's going to be talking about, make sure to tune in for that at the very least, just to get that note about the checklist. She's going to talk about a lot of other things. But that's going to be worth your time at 2.15 in the afternoon. <laughs> and then wrapping this up, this is one I knew as we planned this conference, I absolutely wanted to have a part of it. It's going to be presented by Stephen Sutton from Bellomed on how to design a safe and effective sterile processing department. So he's going to be talking about the high level. If you were to lay out a department and you're not just thinking about the workflow, but you're thinking about the safety of the employees, where do we put devices? Where do we uh, place equipment? How do we make a workflow that's going to be safe for the people in the space? that are working. So Steve's going to wrap up the presentations at 3.30, or start at 3.30 with that last presentation um, on the Safety Burst conference. So I'm hoping if you were on the fence before hearing that lineup of education and folks is going to push you over the edge to join us on November 7th. Now, if you have been convinced, or again, if you're watching or listening to this and you're like, oh, no, I missed it. <laughs> Man, I should log into LinkedIn more often because I had no idea what was going on. Um, I've got good news. You can watch it on demand. And if your Saturday is a little crazy and you can't give us your full Saturday, then tune in live for a couple of the sessions and go back later and finish off the ones that you can't catch for the whole day. So how to register, this is an important question. If you go to beyondclean.net and then click into the conference series tab at the top, then you'll see all of the conferences that we've got scheduled that we've done for 2020. And then of course the Safety Burst Conference that is coming on November 7th. And then you can click in there and register for all of the events. And even though we haven't set it, it's flashed at the beginning of the screen, this thing is worth seven CEs and it's approved for ISHM credit, it's approved for CBSBD credit, and it's approved for nursing contact hours as well. So if you need CEs or if you just love protecting yourself so you can go home in one piece to be with your family and friends after work, I encourage you, I implore you, come and join us at this event. Um, to wrap us up here, Brett, even though we have been talking about the stuff that Peggy's doing with us at this conference, we've spotlighted a lot of the education that's around the safety burst. I know Sertal does a lot of other uh, types of educating out there. So could you walk through for the audience the other ways that they can get involved with Sertal, follow you, and then again, engage in more of these types of educational opportunities with your team. Yeah, sure. We're, uh, you know, as we talked about at the beginning of this interview that, you know, COVID has really forced us to pivot. And most of our educational programs were developed to be presented in person, you know, whether or not you're at a hospital or at a conference. Uh, there's constant educational opportunity out there at these conference conferences, but most of them have gone virtual. And you know, I talked about Zoom fatigue earlier, and I think that that's just something that's a reality: is that we're not able to get out and talk to people, and people are a little bit hesitant to jump on a Zoom call or what have you. But we're starting to really work on some presentable videos that are engaging that you can watch on demand at any time 
that do have uh, CE credits. Those are, you know, in the works. We're almost done with a couple of programs now. And I think that that is going to be something that people can really utilize. And, you know, you mentioned it, that if you can't attend the whole conference or you have to break away to take care of your kids or whatever, um, you know, with how crazy this whole year has been, offering something that is engaging and very, um, you know, worthwhile as far as like education and is something that we're focusing on. So that's that's coming very shortly. We're always willing to give phone consults, always willing to jump on a call and help anybody if they do have questions in regards to our chemicals. The one thing that we really try to focus on here is uh, we have people that physically answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's <important. laughs> And we, you know, we try to get back to our customers in a timely manner and make sure that we're prioritizing safety uh, above all else. So, um, you know, we're going to be moving some programs onto our website so people can access those more freely. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a step away from the normal PowerPoint presentations that we're all used to seeing because going back to my comment on the Zoom fatigue to sit there and watch a 45 to an hour presentation of PowerPoint slides <laughs> kind of <laughs> a little rough. So um, we're just developing some different er things on that front. You guys have been phenomenal. Uh, and I know that we're going to be working with you more closely on that end. And um, really trying to just get our material out there for people to access. And, you know, above all else, it's just about safety. It's about our sa the safety of our sterile processing pros and about the safety of our patients. Yeah, so what I'll add, I think I might have said this at the beginning, um, but I'll, I'll throw this in there again. Sertol is on social media. so. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, you can find their pages by just searching for Sertol International. Um, if you follow Beyond Clean, which if you're watching this, you do, then a lot of our posts will be tagging Sertol uh, in relation to the Safe to Burst Conference as the exclusive sponsor. Um, but to Brett's point, I want to encourage everyone who sees this or hears this conversation for how you consume information. That Zoom fatigue, that is a real uh, challenge, especially in the world post-COVID or in the middle of COVID as we still are. Um, but uh, a good reminder for, if you're a department educator, manager, or if you're just looking for education yourself, is to think about how to diversify how you consume and engage that content. Like so Brett mentioned, um, they're going to be moving some content over to the website, you know, to convert the way that that, com that content is delivered. But social media is a powerful platform to communicate, to educate. There's a lot more content now coming out in the sterile processing circles on YouTube. You've even seen some stuff through TikTok. You see stuff through Twitter. Uh, of course, there's more and more podcasts coming out in the industry, there's all kinds of different delivery platforms that are having important conversations. So don't feel locked in uh, to only the PowerPoint option for getting information or only a textbook. There's a millions of opportunities out there. And if you don't see content in a platform that you want it in, be the person or the team that says, let's create it let's create and own this new platform to deliver this type of information. Again, to keep our team safe and equipped, and then on the other side, to keep the patient safe um, through good sterile processing technique and practices. So Brad, I just wanna thank you for your afternoon with us on this live feed today. And I wanna thank you again and your company, Sertol, for believing in the mission of Beyond Clean, for believing in the mission of a safe sterile processing department and sponsoring the Safety Burst Conference. 
here for 2020. We're excited to hear Peggy uh, on the afternoon of that conference, but we're excited to hear all the other voices and it would not have been able to happen without your support. So thank you again. Yeah, Hank, I appreciate it. And we appreciate you guys, uh, everything that you're doing for the industry. And I just wanted to extend my appreciation to all of our sterile processing pros out there that are working for us to keep us safe when we're in the hospitals. Um, I know I, I really was you know, a first hand um, back in March when I had knee surgery. And so I really do appreciate everything you do. Uh, so does Sertol. We, we really are an advocate for not only patient safety, but our the safety of our serial processing professionals. And we're here to help. We're here to educate. And um, we're happy to be working with you guys. Awesome. All right. Well, thank everyone again for tuning in and listening. Uh, keep fighting dirty out there, and we'll see you on November 7th, Saturday, November 7th, for the Safety Burst Conference. Until then, we'll see you next time.